Hey what's up guys, it's Ben Bonk, and believe it or not, it's officially been two whole years since I started working on Slime Keep. So today, I wanted to go back to the beginning and showcase all the progress that I made so far. So let's get into it. Starting off, before Slime Keep, I was working on a small project known as Hacker Game, and I actually ended up making a few devlogs on this channel about this game. Development was going okay, but I was starting to struggle a bit on some of the game's mechanics, and my motivation was slowly fading. The day of releasing the second devlog for the game, I heard about the 46 Ludum Dare Game Jam, which was starting later that night. I had the weekend free, so I decided to enter it being my first large-scale game jam. I then spent the next few days making what is now known as Slime Keep, Jam Version. The game was just a simple high-score based game where the player could run around a room and shoot enemies. The twist being that these enemies would grow, and would grant the player more points at later stages. So the player would have to choose if they want to let the slimes grow for more points, but at a more risk, or if they just want to instantly kill the slimes. To be honest, the execution on this concept was a bit questionable and flawed, but I was still happy with the game nonetheless, and it got decent reviews and lots of critical feedback. I then created and released a devlog about how I made this game. Looking back, this devlog was pretty terrible, and I don't think it would have gotten nearly as many views if uploaded today, but game development YouTube was quite different back then. To my surprise, it somehow blew up, at least according to my standards, as it gained almost 3,000 views in the first week, eventually reaching 40,000 views just a few months later. And this was a ton for me at the time, as I only had around 200 subscribers. Let me also mention that during this time, the pandemic started ramping up. Don't get me wrong, the pandemic was, and still is, a terrible thing. But it was also kind of a blessing in disguise for me, as it finally gave me the time and motivation to focus on game development and YouTube, and I can assure you I would not be here today without it. So with all the feedback from the game and the video blowing up, I decided to make a follow-up devlog just a few days later where I stated how I was planning to turn the game into a more level-based survival game. I also added quite a few pieces of polish to the game, such as some new sprites, UI, and inventory, you get the point. Most of these were pretty good changes, but I must admit that the temporary decision to change slimes into this was a low point for me. Moving on to the next devlog, I started to actually question what I was going to do with this game. I didn't really have a plan for development at all, and I felt like I was just polishing things without knowing what I wanted to do with the concept. And you'll see this is a major theme throughout the first year or so of development, and even still a bit now. I just had no clue what I was really doing most of the time, which is a major lesson learned. For all you game devs out there, before you start working on a project, have an outline and know what you actually want to make. I know this seems obvious, but for me personally, I got so caught up in polishing the jam version that I failed to create a clear vision for what I even wanted to make the game. But anyways, this was the point where I decided I wanted to turn Slime Keep into a roguelike. Why you ask? Well, it's solely because of these four early members of my Discord server who recommended that I turn the game into a roguelike. It's not that roguelikes were my favorite genre, and I don't even think I played a real roguelike in my life at this point, but from now on, I was making a roguelike. And yeah, I know, Slime Keep sounds like a recipe for disaster at this point, but somehow we're still chugging along to this day. But back to the devlog, I also created an upgrade system and some upgrades, which were soon thrown out the window because the upgrade code was horrendous and not too flexible. But what did stick around were the weapons that I made, which are still around today with new sprites. Next, we had the third devlog, and we're starting to creep up on around a month of development here. The big change here was that I updated the floor to be a darker green color, which saved everyone's eyes. I also spent a bunch of time here trying to fix my weapon system and weapons themselves, which were in shambles. But I think I kind of just made things worse, as here are two real screenshots from the old weapon code. And here's what I had to say about this. So they're all in this one script, which makes things so much easier. Uh, I actually made some pretty massive changes, just and it should make the game run a little better. You know, not clog up some stuff. It's really, you know, it's really necessary to uh, make my game run better, and I'm just really glad I got that done. So what did I do? I spent the next devlog deleting all the code I just wrote and transforming the weapon system to use scriptable objects. I also worked on the player's weapons inventory quite a bit, and a lot of these systems are actually still in place today, but I do think there's probably a better solution over scriptable objects. Devlog number 5. In this one, I mainly focused on getting enemies to upgrade and working on their very scuff jump animations. Another important change I made was making so slimes would drop slime balls when killed, instead of giving the player points, as this game is supposed to be a roguelike, right? Also, a critical part of this system is that more upgraded slimes would drop more slime balls. This really emphasizes the risk-reward behavior that I was trying to achieve in the jam version, so the player has the micro decision if they want to kill slimes early, yielding less slime balls, or if they want to kill slimes later as they grow, becoming more difficult but yielding more slime balls. And I should also mention that these slime balls would be used to purchase weapons and upgrades for the player. Also, I did a ton of polishing and fixing bugs relating to the weapon system in this devlog. Moving on, devlog number 6 is where I focus on making some of the first new enemies for the game. I made the projectile slime, the assassin slime, and the bomb slime. 
I then spent devlog 7 scrapping all the work I just made in devlog number 6 as I made the decision to have slimes have dedicated jumping and dying animations instead of these just wacky looking code based ones. On the devlog number 8 I made a bunch more polished additions because that's definitely what the game needed right now. I also created two shops for the game so the player could actually spend their slime balls on upgrades and weapons. Fast forward a few weeks and now we're on to devlog number 9, and believe it or not this marks just over 3 months of development. The first big change I made here was I updated the tile set as the previous tile set was extremely rushed and ugly. This massively changed the whole look of the game, definitely for the better. This devlog also introduced two of the most essential parts of the game today, that being the capturing system where the player could use a capture gun to suction slimes and use them to upgrade the pet, which is another new thing that I started on. The plan here was that the pet would attack other slimes, passively helping the player. So on top of deciding if the player wants to let the slimes grow for more slime balls, the player would also have micro decision if they want to kill slimes or capture them. I then spent the next devlog balancing the capture gun suctioning, as previously you could just capture any slime in the game effortlessly, which just made things a little too overpowered. So I just made a battery system which was unique ammo for the capture gun and some other tweaks. And at this point, notice how it's been pretty much 4 months now and I don't even know what I'm really doing. I know I'm making a roguelike, but I haven't even started working on any of the roguelike or game loop elements. This is something that I really really regret. I basically spent the first 4 months of development just polishing things, working on enemies, weapons, and systems without even knowing how the game was going to work and what I wanted to do with Slime Keep. I just really want to emphasize this, as these flaws have massively delayed Slime Keep but have also shaped it into the somewhat mess that it is today. But let's move on. By the 11th devlog, I had finally started working on procedural generation. I decided to go with a procedural generation asset by a guy named Andre who basically saved my life. The asset took quite a while to figure out and set up, as it was kind of like learning a whole new small game engine, but in the end I got some basic room generations working. Basically, I could make a bunch of pre-made rooms and corridors, and then give those rooms and corridors to the generator, and the generator would place and connect these rooms together. There was still a lot to work on and tweak, but still, this was a massive step forward for the game, and I'm really glad I went with an asset solution. Next up in the 12th devlog, I took more initiative to try to plan out the game by making a slime keep game plan document, where I could draft out all my ideas for the game. So I just spent most of the devlog drafting out game loop and progression ideas for slime keep. In the end, I decided that I wanted the game to run on days, instead of new floors or levels like in other roguelikes. I thought of the idea where there could be an infinite or very large amount of days in the game. Each day would bring more difficult enemies, and the twist was that the player could fight the slime king or final boss that I planned on at any point. So the player would have to make the decision if they should fight the slime king, or if they should fight another day to try to get some better loot. I really like these ideas, but to be honest, the main reason I decided to make all these core gameplay decisions was because I was kind of scared of people just climbing my game and enter the Gungeon clone. As mentioned, I didn't really play many roguelikes prior to the development of Slime Keep, so I played a lot of Enter the Gungeon to kind of discover what the genre is about, and I absorbed much of what I know about roguelikes and how they work from Enter the Gungeon. So it's kind of funny to think how this urge to differentiate myself completely changed the development of Slime Keep forever. Anyways, I thought of a few more things in this devlog, such as having boss fights be optional but heavily incentivized. Then I made some updates on the slime ball system and started outlining a boss fight system for the game. I think it's also worth mentioning that around this time I think my devlogs really started to improve in quality, which is nice to see. But back to the game, in devlog 13 I started executing some of these game loop and progression ideas. Mainly I worked on the difficulty logic. I used the procedural generation asset to set up the system where there would be different difficulties of rooms ranging from 1 to 5. The difference between these rooms is the difficulty of enemies inside the rooms, so difficulty 1 room would have easy to beat slimes, while a difficulty 5 room would have really hard ones. Then I could place these rooms together onto different level graphs, and the further a day the player is on, the harder the level graphs will get. So yeah, that was the plan going forward for progression. Onto the 14th devlog, I worked on the inside of the player's house and made the functionality so the player could sleep and progress onto the next day. I then spent the rest of the devlog focusing on the slime book, which is the book that would serve as a bestiary as well as the settings menu in place where the player can view an enlarged minimap. And speaking of minimaps, in the 15th devlog, I finally added one into the game. I also added in this really neat fog of war effect, which was much needed. Then I worked on a few other small things, like this chest that was plenty used for rewards, and I started working on the way for the player to travel and fight the slime king. The plan was that the player could just take this boat at any time to journey to the slime king's lair, and I ended up with this for now. Next, in the 16th devlog, I spent a lot of time just fixing issues with the procedural generation, because game development. But I also added two more slimes into the game. The first being the wizard slime, which could teleport and shoot projectiles towards the player, and the next being the splitter slime, which would spawn one or two more slimes when killed. Devlog number 18 brings the addition of the slime keep steam page. I made this because it's really important for a game to accumulate wishlist prior to a launch, which helps a ton with the steam algorithm. So if you have a minute, consider clicking the link in the description and wishlisting the game if you haven't already. But in this devlog, I made the shield slime that would protect other slimes from taking damage, as well as the square slime that would charge towards the player, and the sleepy slime that would shoot a massive amount of projectiles once damaged. 
Also, I changed the slime pet to this inverted look, which was a pretty questionable move. This thankfully got reverted in the 18th devlogue, where I also finished up the poison slime, which would lay poison on the ground. But the main focus of this devlogue was making the first boss for the game, which was the mech boss. This boss had a few different attacks, such as shooting homing missiles and walking around with a flamethrower. And I'm pretty happy with this boss. He might be a bit generic, but it's still nice to have a boss in the game. Also in this devlogue, I updated the weapon art, which was quite outdated at this point, and I also reworked the health system. Previously, the health system was pretty much just a copy of Gungeon, so I wanted to change that. I used this art by him and got everything set up. I also used these three little slots to slightly rework the dash system, so the player would have three dashes that would slowly replenish, and the player would have to think about when they wanted to dash, instead of the dash just being on a set timer. Then in the next devlog, I added a white outline to the player to match the pet, updated and tweaked the mech boss a bit, fixed some bugs, and made the DJ slime boss. This boss wouldn't directly attack the player, and instead it would use its speaker and environment to blast attacks at the player. We had these notes that would play throughout the whole fight, a speaker's beam attack, a dance floor fire attack, the sound wave attack, and so on. However, one thing to note here is that I wanted this boss to synchronize with the DJ's music, which hasn't been made yet, as I'm holding off on finding a composer. So this fight is like 70-ish percent done. All the attacks are there, but not linked together. I'm still really happy with it though. Also, this point officially marks one year of Slime Food development, which is a really cool milestone. But if you have any milestones that you want to reach yourself, check out Skillshare, who is sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries. It's a great place to learn all sorts of new skills and a variety of topics. Personally, I decided to check out this course on how to turn a Raspberry Pi into a CCTV system by Jamie Gregg. I've had this Raspberry Pi for a few years now that's just been sitting around gathering dust, so I want to take the opportunity to actually learn how to create something cool with it. This short course showed me some of the basics of the Raspberry Pi and how to turn it into an actual camera. By the end, I created this. I was able to set up the camera and host it on my own local network. It's really cool to see I was finally able to get some use out of this Raspberry Pi and learn a bit about it along the way. So if you have a skill you want to learn, the first 1,000 people to use my code BENBONK or click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So invest in yourself and your personal growth with Skillshare. Moving on, in the 20th Slime Cave devlog, I worked on the shop a bit. I made a deal system where the player could complete tasks to get discounts on items. I also made this dialogue bubble and that was the new shop. But my main focus for this video is adding new upgrades for the player. I made a ton of these, and I won't get into the details right now, as there's a devlog for that, but all these upgrades were really nice to have in the game. And oh, yeah, remember that slime book I made a while ago? I made an inventory page so the player could see the weapons and upgrades that they owned. On to the 21st slime cube devlog, I made some ammo drops that had a small chance to spawn after clearing a room, and fixed a ton of small issues as usual, but I mainly focused on reworking the slime capturing system. Previously, it was just way too easy to capture slimes, and not that engaging, so I set up to change that. First, I made a panic mode for the slimes, so once they enter the suction zone of the capture gun, an exclamation point appears and they start panicking around trying to skip the suction. The player would have to continually aim the capture gun towards the slime, and the difficulty of these jumps would scale with the slime's difficulty. I also had it so that once the slime is done trying to escape, it just moves towards the gun, similar to how the capture gun used to function. This was cool, but I decided to also add a last stand minigame for the slimes, where the slider would appear, and the player would have to release the mouse button at the right time to successfully capture the slime. Overall, these changes massively helped the capturing system. And speaking of capturing slimes, what you did with these captured slimes also needed some adjustments, so in the next devlog, I focused on this issue. Previously, once capturing a slime, it would just go towards an invisible level system for the pet, where once you capture enough slimes, the pet will get increased speed, attack damage, etc. This was okay, but it definitely lacked some depth, so I started reworking the system. First, I decided that it'd be cool to split up enemies into five different categories to help with slime pet upgrades. These categories being Ranger, Brute, Assassin, Specialty, and Passive. Then I made this slime pen where the player could release his captured slimes into. Then these slimes would turn into five different types of currency corresponding to their slime type. Then with this currency, the player could purchase different types of slime pet specific upgrades on the skill tree. So there would be Brute class upgrades, Ranger class upgrades, etc. I got all the UI set up and the system was called the Sliminator. Then in the 23rd devlog, I worked on implementing these slime pet upgrades. I won't get into the details here as there's a devlog for that, but I'm really happy with all these upgrades as they added so much depth for the slime pet. Another thing I worked on this devlog was tweaking the capturing system as I made an arrow to display where the slime was going to move to add some predictableness in the capturing. And the final thing I did in this devlog was I started working on the Slime King boss fight. This was going to be the final boss fight in the game that the player could fight at any point, so I wanted to make sure to pay extra special attention to it. I started off by drafting out some ideas. I settled on the idea of having the Slime King have 5 phases with attacks based on each of the different types of slimes in the game. Then the king would choose these phases in a random order. So with the help of my discord, I threw together this scene. 
then in Devlog24, I worked on actually bringing the Slime King to life. I made all sorts of attacks, such as this massive scythe attack, this crown projectile attack, this ground pound attack, the slime guards attack, and so on. I also made this kind of last stand phase for the king as a last ditch effort to defeat the player, and that was the 24th devlog. But in the 25th devlog, I got a lot of feedback that many of these attacks that I made just weren't too good, so I focused on fixing them. I also added ramp ups to the fight, which were just passive attacks that would be added on in the king's regular attacks after defeating a phase to add some gradual difficulty. Then I added some more polish to the fight, such as these bleacher slimes which were made by the community instead of events to happen when the slime king is defeated. On to the 26th devlog, I worked a lot on the setting prior to this fight. I worked on this boat cutscene and little buffer area before the fight. I made this new shopkeeper to give the player a chance to purchase items before they fight the king, and I made the actual layer and build up for the king. I also finally started working on designing a bunch of new room layouts for the games, and started to focus a bit more on the game loop and combat. Finally, in the last devlog up to this point, I decided to work on a ton of new enemies for the game. I yet again asked for your guys' support on some of the art and animations, and I was able to add 10 very cool and unique enemies to the game in this devlog. We got this miner guy, this healer guy, this servant guy, and so on. And with that said, that's pretty much two whole years of development on Slimekeep. Overall, I'm really happy with the game I've made so far. It's been quite a rocky development, but I want to thank you guys for sticking with me for so long and for all the help I've received on the game. If there's one thing you can take away from this video as an indie game dev, please have a plan for your game. I spent so many devlogs working on so many unessential things for the game, and I really regret this. I really wish I just worked on procedural generation and a core minimum viable product instead of spending so much time on development on random things that were just easy to work on at the time, but not necessarily essential. But at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world for me. Slimekeep has just been one massive game development learning process. With that said, that's all I have to say for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next devlog. Bye.